and turn to number 714. Number 714 will be our song of encouragement after Brother Quirtle brings us a devotional lesson. Uh, just a few reminders uh, to go over tonight. One is we have a, a visiting missionary uh, this coming Sunday morning. He'll be speaking during the, the uh, uh, class time, Adam Hasius. So be sure to remember if you're, uh, that your adult class, all the adult classes will be meeting in here Sunday morning. Also remember um, to take, if you will, their basket. I noticed the basket in the foyer. Uh, there's still some names in there of those that are going to Honduras. Uh, they'll be leaving soon. So uh, please take one of those if you haven't done so already and pray, especially for that person uh, in their travels. Remember the um, the ladies' night out. The details are in the bulletin. Uh, that's going to happen Monday, July the 30th uh, at 6 o'clock at Leanne Richards' house. So uh, that'll be approaching soon. Start planning now. Also, Vernon mentioned that uh, he's got a basket of cucumbers that are located in the usher's room. So if you like cucumbers and there's free free ones in there, just take as many as you'd like, Brother Cor. Uh, put the the reading list up there. I, I forgot to do this a while ago. If you put that on there as I'm I'm talking, turn to Matthew chapter 11 verse 7, and I'm going to kind of dovetail our our devotional into uh, our lesson tonight. One of my favorite illustrations about expectations is from the Burkean and Faulkner films, where Brother Burkean is is talking about a young man and a young woman as they are have just returned from their honeymoon, and it's Monday morning. They're about to go to work. And he says, you can just picture them there in the bed. They're, they're, they're lying side by side, back to back. And he said, she is on her side of the bed, and, and she is thinking this. Oh, we're married. It's so good. And, and I remember when mom and dad... I was at mom and dad's. Dad used to get up and fix breakfast for us. And he would make bacon and eggs and he would fix coffee. And, and I am so glad that I'm married because my husband is going to do that. And he's on the other side. And he says, oh, I have had to have my own cooking for so long. And, and when I was growing up, mom used to, to fix bacon and eggs and, and hash browns and, and gravy and and coffee, and, and she, she's going to get up in a minute and do that. And he says, they're both just lying there <laughs> waiting for the other because of their expectations. Have you had expectations about things that you thought for certain were going to, to happen a certain way? Maybe not in marriage, but in life. I think of Matthew 11, verse 7, and and you think of the people that went out to hear John. They had heard about this powerful man. And they get out there and they see this crazy man to them. And he's shouting, Repent! The kingdom of heaven is at hand! And Jesus is looking back and he says, What did you go out to see? Look there in verse 7. What did you go out to see in the wilderness? Did you go out to see a reed shaken in the wind? In other words, did you go out to see a nervous ninny? Did you go out to see someone who was just as shy as he could be? No, you went out to see someone who you heard was powerful. Let's take it a step further. Jesus was essentially saying, did you go out to see someone who would give you approval to do anything you want to do? Did you really expect that? When you came to Jesus, did you really think that he was going to write a free check for you to live however you want to? No. Then why do so many people in this world believe that we can live anything we, any way we want to and Jesus is just going to say, oh, there, there, child, you lived, you had a good life on earth and you did anything you wanted to, you come on up. Latter part of Matthew 11. Jesus said, come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart. 
and you shall find rest unto your souls. What people don't understand is the guilt and the burden of sin is what Jesus is talking about. And he, when he says, give me your guilt and give me your burden, he's saying, turn to me, turn to me. And it is eloquent and it sounds so eloquent, but when the rubber meets the road, it means change your life. Come to me and change your life. If you're willing to do that tonight, Jesus still stands. He's still with arms outstretched. Come to me, all you that labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Maybe your expectations of the Christian life is, oh, you can do whatever you want to, but you know that's not true. You know when you give your life over to Jesus, you live for him. So if you expect that and you want that, we want you to come. If you, your expectations have just been completely demolished and, and you're so discouraged, but you want to start over, you can do that tonight. Either come in obedience to Jesus, put him on in baptism, live the new life faithfully to God, or come home tonight as we stand and as we sing. When we walk with the Lord in the to us sure safe travels number 37 will be our closing song tonight number 37 we'll just do the first stanza and then we'll be led in our closing prayer <clears throat> angry words oh let them thank you so much for all the many, many blessings that you've given to us. We thank you so much that we are able to gather here and study your word. We pray that we will uh, use what we learned tonight, what we studied tonight, and apply it to our lives. 
Please help us all to look to your word every single day and look for ways that we can bring other people into your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.